So this is a bullet hole here in the VPO's door. Exit wound over there. Alaska turns into the Wild West. The guy pulls out a gun and starts shooting holes in the guy's boat. What's up? I'm from Alaska. I hollered that I have a gun to come out of the woods. Whoa, who's this? And troopers must play sheriff. The only cop that they have had to leave town because things got a little too dangerous for them. Open the door and I'm going to kick it open. Come on out now. I'm going to finish breaking your door down. Hey, troopers with a war. Open the door. Funny. This is a real Alaska. 300 pound black bear can just shred you to pieces. If you make yourself look like prey, it's usually what you'll become. There we go. It's Grizz. Thirty miles north of the Arctic Circle lies Kotzebue. One of the most remote locales in all of Alaska. Home to just over 3,000 residents. And it's Trooper Tim Smith's job to keep the peace here. I've been here for just over two months now, and I just transferred out of Palmer Post. I'm excited. This is where I've wanted to be since I joined. Today, he's catching a plane to one of the most isolated and dangerous villages in the area. We're heading up to Ambler. It's one of the interior villages. Lately, it's been kind of hopping. We've had a lot of illegal alcohol manufacturing, and um, it's been leading to a lot of other problems. 90% of crime in rural Alaska is alcohol-related. One of the most prevalent is homebrew, which is made of yeast, sugar, and juice, and can be more potent than store-bought beer. Many rural villages have outlawed alcohol completely. But in Ambler, illegal brewers are refusing to stop production. Right now, there's no law enforcement in town. The only cop that they have uh, essentially had to leave town because things got a little too dangerous for them. You can draw an alcohol nexus on just about anything that happens in western Alaska. If we were to get the homebrew off the streets, most of our crime in western Alaska would probably go away. After over an hour-long flight, Trooper Smith heads straight to the home of the village police officer. Hey! So this is a bullet hole here in the VPO's door. And this is why he's currently not in town. There's a bullet hole. Exit wound over there. In that window. Hello? Hello? They left, left town for a couple of weeks because things were getting a little too dangerous for him. Smith wants some answers and heads to the source. The home of one of the village's most notorious suspected brewers. It's like having a wild, wild rest, huh? That's what he can just have it. Gun pointed you to the window and you wouldn't know. He's got a sign here that says, no trespassing if you're law enforcement, show a search warrant. If you're, if I'm under arrest, show me an arrest warrant. If you don't have any of those, turn around, don't come back. Thank you. So, anyways, that's, that's what I'm dealing with. I think he knows I'm not going to abide by that. I don't like walking up to somebody's house who's already a little hostile. He's got a padlock on the door. That yeah, doesn't look like he's home. Yep. This is a bucket, and uh, in it is homebrew. They're going to recognize this bucket because the individual who owns it is kind of notorious for carrying it around town and selling his liquor out of it. So uh, it's not going to take long for word to travel to the fella that I've got it. I want folks to know that if you're walking around town with a bucket of homebrew, we'll take it from you, we'll charge you, we'll arrest you. To help with the arrest, Trooper Smith calls in an undercover officer from the Alaska Drug Unit whose identity must remain hidden. He's hiding, but we'll find him. But confronting him is risky. Bootlegging is big business in these remote parts, and the suspect might not give it up without a fight. They think he's hiding here at his sister's house. She's ridiculous. She's a strong, she's the biggest homebrew we have out here. It's kind of a family affair. Watch for anybody bailing out of here. Hello. Hey, what's happening? I've got numerous reports that you're going yeah, as long as I breathe, they're all, you know, putting something on me. It's because you're brewing. You guys didn't even fight nothing. What well, you guys tell me? You guys won't fight nothing again. Well, give us our turn. Is this brew going on right here with the door open inside the shed? I can see an open open bag going on here, and I smell I smell brew coming out of there. There ain't nothing. You guys don't be searching. Okay. Nothing. Well, I'm not searching. Your door, is, your door is open, and I can see an open bag right here, and I can smell it right here. There's nothing in there for okay. me to search. So. Well, you're brewing right here in your shed. No. If I was brewing, you think I would leave the door open? I'm not that stupid. Well, 
I'm not saying that you are or you aren't, but I'm saying that there's that, that looks a heck of a lot like brew coming out of that bucket right there. You know what? You guys get a search light and get out of my property. Okay, Bye, okay. Well, then you you come any closer, okay, and we're going to have problems, all right? You're not going to shut this, all right? Because right, what, 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 I could, what I'll do is I'll seize and apply for a search warrant for the shed if that's okay. what I have to okay. do, okay? okay? Don't get smart with me, okay? Get a search warrant. Okay? Yep. Get a search warrant. If she's screwing in here, then she's going to have ingredients in here and there, which means she needs to be dumping that stuff right now. So if we're going to apply for a search warrant, then we need to seize the whole place. You need to exit. You need to exit the residence right now. We're going to come in and secure it, so you can't dispose of any evidence. Okay. Well, then you and everybody else inside needs to come outside while we apply for a search warrant. I need a strong order. You can either come to the door or we're going to break the door. I'm going to give you to the count of ten, and then we're going to come inside your house and we're going to seize your residence in anticipation for a search warrant. Okay. okay. You want to breach? Yeah. Come on out! Come on out now! Come on out now! I'm gonna finish breaking your door down. Okay, come on out, and everybody else. Come on out, everybody else needs to exit the residence. Come on out, ma'am. You need to exit the house. But her brother, their suspect, isn't there. Get your guys out of here right now! Right now, both of you guys. Get out here. Get out. We're gonna sue you guys. You guys are going to be big time. We're well within our law of being able to do that. I'm not trying to play around with you. I, I told you what we were doing. I'm not going to stand out here in the rain. Well, I didn't ask you to. You don't have to stay here at all. Innocent until proven guilty. What happened okay. to that? There was a strong odor of alcoholic beverage coming out of the residence. After an hour, nice. they get their search warrant. you want to start with the res? Or do you want to see what's in this, see what's in this bucket? Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, there's going to be Brewster left in there. We're gonna need some brew, measurable amount in the bottom. That's an old homebrew bag, and this bottle of rich and rare. Are those gas funnels, or are they got brew in those funnels there? Hopefully that's gas, but that could be brew, couldn't it? Yeah, that's what I'm hearing the latest trend is. But the most damaging evidence is inside the house. You know what this is? She tried to hide it by pouring it into her honey bucket. Honey buckets are crude toilets. We got evidence tampering now. Yeah. Most folks out here don't have plumbing. The uh, owner of the residence ran into the bathroom, tried to dispose of evidence. But the deal is she, she can't flush it. So what I was pouring out was a mixture of home brew, urine, and stuff from the honey bucket. Now we're in a position where we need to make our arrest. They head to the woman's mother's house. Troopers. What can I do for you? Is uh around? She said she was going to come over here. We just went and did a search warrant on her. Can we come here? Huh, she jump in somebody's boat and head up to camp? I mean, I don't think so. But Smith's not buying it. Well, that confirms my suspicions then that as soon as uh, she left, she hopped in somebody's boat and headed down to camp. So they head to the river to track her down. That's the problem. Let's find her. Run down there, But these boaters aren't their suspects. Can you guys try some fishing? No. Their suspects most likely went up river and disappeared into the fish camps. Both folks and their family ended up taking off and uh, kind of fleeing town. We'll come back and we'll arrest her. Uh, she's not running from the crime. We'll still get her. But the troopers have stumbled upon more evidence of alcohol infiltrating the villages. Gas jug. Got to take that in so nobody steals it, huh? Yeah. I got a little odor of booze. So somebody's got some booze on him. Oh. Who is it? Well, I see the empty jugs down there. Was that what they had the brew in it? No, we we yes. picked up trash. Okay. Do me a quick favor, man, real quick. Since you're the driver of this boat, you can count, right? Everybody can count, right? I can count. Can you count backwards for me from 69 to 54? 69 to 54? Yeah, can you do that? And I, I'm old, dude. <laughs> well, I'm getting there myself, but do you, can you count? Can you try? Can you do that test for me? 69 to 54? Yeah. Okay. 69, 54. Uh, right. What? Please don't disrespect me. Okay, I know that you've been drinking tonight, and we, we, we both know that you had a little bit to booze. Just go ahead and wrap your lips around here and go ahead and blow through the tube. Keep on blowing. We'll hear it click. Keep going. Good. Okay. PBT's a 231. The, the problem is that you've had a substantial amount to drink tonight, whether you're driving a motor vehicle, all right, whether you're driving a, a fishing boat, or whether you're driving a four-wheeler. You can't be driving drunk, okay? And you're drunk, so you're going to go to jail for DUI. He had two jugs of homebrew that he had consumed while he was out fishing. What if you crash into somebody else who's on the boat? It's not the brother-sister homebrewer team they wanted, but the arrest makes the streets of Ambler safer tonight. Most of the crime here in the village is alcohol-related, so every time that we can get some of that homebrew off the streets, we could uh, be potentially saving lives. Across the state, it's only 11 o'clock at night in Fairbanks. 
and Trooper Ryan Lott's night is heating up. It looks like there's a, a vehicle just stolen from uh, Lady Terrace. They should be coming They're down this way, see so if we can find it. And when pursuing fleeing suspects, Alaska's almost 24-hour summer daylight gives troopers an advantage. But Lott's not the only chase car. The car owner is also pursuing a stolen vehicle. Nearly 60% of all Alaskans are armed, so Lot must find them before the owner takes matters into his own hands. With the suspects and owner in a foot chase, Lot's now driving into a potentially life-threatening call. Uh, so now someone's calling and saying that someone may be in some kind of physical altercation. This could be just about anything. They meet the stolen vehicle's owner on scene. I spun my truck around and chased him down this way. Uh -huh. And I seen him spin into this way. And they pulled here and dove into the woods. The car reversed all the way over there. And smashed into the, I'm guessing he left it in gear. Yeah. I hollered that I have a gun to come out of the woods. The lady came out, the guy ran. They detained the female passenger. <laughs> He's gonna go to jail for like ever. Going over here over there. You literally right there, sir. Right there with freaking. It looks like we got probably one person that fled on foot in the woods. And quickly set up a perimeter to block the man's escape. Trooper Lott heads in to flush him out. But he could be walking right into a trap. Last time. Am I on the last of three troopers? What up? What up, family? Oh. Keep walking. Watch out for that big mountain of skirt there. out the suspect is a repeat offender same same kids from down there same runner less than last time there was a case that i had last last winter where some juveniles stole two vehicles and it was him and a friend and we caught them for the same thing vehicle theft this pvt is 209 see my pretty lucky to find him and he'll be charged vehicle theft obviously as well along with dui some people don't learn I like to see everyone. Can't wait to see myself. He's got some, some growing up to do. He saw cousins. He'll see you soon. While the endless light of summer can help troopers catch suspects fleeing in the woods, when winter strikes, the near constant darkness can also have its advantages. The cover of night helps troopers sneak up on dangerous criminals and take them by surprise. I'll be there in about ten. We got a report uh, about a month ago of a burglary at our residence here in the Fairbanks area. Looks like some people broke into their house and stole quite a few items, upwards of about $11,000 or so. But we ended up uh, yesterday doing a buy and end up seizing one of the items that was positively identified. So what we're doing now is we're going to execute a search warrant. This is definitely something that you don't want to do by yourself. Haley meets up with other troopers to brief them on the stolen goods and the suspects. Okay. That's a list of what we're looking for. Obviously, we're looking for any kind of weapons that might be around. If we're looking for her. Um, if she's there, make sure we definitely get a cell phone for her. Him as well, any kind of information that we have on him. Um, again, cell phones are important. And then uh, this guy here, this guy could be a big one too. He's got some uh, previous theft stuff and drug use. Is there a reason to believe he's armed? Yeah. 
It's a pretty wide open property, so I think our best bet is just go in there hot, pull in the driveway, bail out of the cars and get to the front door. If you take fire or take fire on the way up, we're going we're gonna to back up and we're going to take the perimeter. Um, if one of us takes a round, your vehicle will be last. Okay. So we'll throw, uh, throw the trooper in the back of the vehicle and we'll go. Okay? sure if these people know that we're coming right now um, we have to assume that they do if they know we're coming and they're inside and we're outside and trying to get in uh, so there's always the danger of them having guns or weapons or anything like that uh, you know and we got to all file through a, a narrow doorway and um, it kind of leaves us wide open so it's always a little nerve-wracking whenever we do things like this Twenty-five, thirty-three. When uh, we get up there, if you want to bail out, we'll have uh, 32 turn his lights on when we're ready to announce. As soon as I get ready to pull into the driveway, I'm going to go ahead and hit my overhead. Just put them on, bail out, we'll go through the door and knock, give them their time, and then uh, we'll go in. Slow up. State troopers with the warrant! State troopers with the search warrant! State troopers with the search warrant! State troopers with the warrant! State troopers with the warrant, open the door! State troopers with the warrant, open the door! State troopers with the search warrant, come to the door! State troopers with the warrant, open the door! Go Put your hands up! Come here. Go in the house. Nobody search warrant. Turn around. You in the bathroom, clap your hands up. Watch them. Clear. Clear? Clear. There's a rifle and there's uh, weapons there. Okay. Sit down. Who is that? Who owns all the firearms? I do. You do, sir? Yes, I do. What's your name? Well, it's right there. The troopers find a robbery suspect. We have a copy of a warrant here. So basically what happens, we have reason to believe that uh, inside the house are items that uh, were taken during the theft of the house. There's nothing in here. They go and search whatever they want. There's not in here. Now you got some prescription pills, though. No. Nope. They're not? Or they're not yours? No. Okay, listen, man. The faster you cooperate with me, the faster I can get you out of here, okay? If you're complicating things, and you're not being honest with me, then it's just longer we're going to be in here. You guys ask me any questions? Is that, is that what your choice? You want a lawyer? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and sit back down. Please sit. Why don't you guys go ahead and start running those guns? You guys allowed to just take pictures of all my stuff? Yep. Not Shouldn't like go. a violation of my privacy. The search warrant takes away your right to privacy. That's what the search warrant does. 10 9. You check the back. Nothing we're looking for. Their search turns up nothing, and troopers fear he may have moved the stolen goods elsewhere. Troop coming out. There's nothing in the match's description. Any cell phones or anything like that? He's got a cell phone. I'm going to go and seize that. Um, He's a suspect on a few other things in addition. Although this investigation stalls, almost 450 miles west, back to the Arctic hub of Kotzebue, Trooper Gordon Young is on the trail of another thief. We're trying to hurry and get to Norvik right now. Um, we got a suspect in a burglary. Someone burglarized the village of Norvik's only store. Getting away with $9,000 worth of goods essential to life in the rural village. My suspect is trying to flee the town right now, so we're trying to hurry and get there before he goes. Young charters a plane to get to the village quickly in the hopes of catching the thief and recovering the stolen goods. I got my VPOs looking for him now. This is a constant thing for me to come to this village and do, 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 do things. Guaranteed. You looked at all the video, Joe? The Norvik Village police officer cues up the surveillance video of the burglary. So when was that, like 15? This is towards the end. This one here. Yeah. Did you see that? Just watch that again. Right here. 
Yeah. Young's encountered one of the thieves before. I saw him for like two seconds. I knew it was him. Some people that's running from us just aren't very violent, but this particular guy is. He also stole large amounts of ammunition. They didn't take any guns, did they? Bunch of bullets. So the suspect could be heavily armed. He's got a couple of felony assault convictions on his record, so I need to watch myself. So I want to run to the airport and see if he's getting on the plane. The last flight of the day leaves in 20 minutes. Just run down there. It's the suspect's only way out of the village, and Young believes he may try to get on. Where's a gray blue jacket? The investigation shifts to a manhunt. Okay, so we'll go and try and find him. Young heads to the burglar's last known location. State trooper, open the door. Open the door, I'm gonna kick it open. State Trooper, open the door. Open the door, I'm gonna kick it open. Come on. Sit right here. Hey, who's this? Howdy, how are you? Whoa, what's your, who's this? Hey, who? What's his name? Hey, come talk to me again like that. What's his last name? Okay. Come open the door. I'm going to come in. Who's out in the shack now? So somebody probably might want to open the door. I'm going to kick it open. Open the door. Who else is in here? You guys know where the at? When's the last time anybody's seen him? Okay. Where'd you see him at? Here? Okay. You don't know where he's at now? Okay. Their only lead for the burglary suspect goes nowhere. Hey. But suddenly, the village police officer receives an important tip. All right, thanks. The person we're looking for obviously was across the street. He went to the back door and he's off out on that end somewhere. Not long into their search, Trooper Young spots a suspect. I'm gonna go around and stay right here. So, now, tell me what's going on. Why did you break in the native store? I didn't break in the native store. Okay. Okay. Do you want me to take you and show you the video of you in the native store? That was me. Yeah, it was. Dude, it's you. I see you. I know who you are. Any reason why you jumped out the window and run down to here? What window? I never jumped out the window. Anything else you want to tell me? Okay, you're under arrest. You gonna cooperate with me? No. Okay. Turn around, go this way. Now, Young must turn his attention to finding the stolen goods. I did some interviews, um, and I got an anonymous tip. He heads to the house where he thinks they're stashed. So nobody lives here, really? I look in the window, see if I see anything. Oh, it's underneath. Jeez. 
but it's only a few small items. Okay, well, I guess we covered something. Twelve gauge shells. Uh, they were buried in the snow. Young fears the man's already sold the rest of the loot. But then. I have all kinds of stuff in here. Up in the attic here. Oh. This right here is probably about four hundred dollars. Just this little box right here, hundred bucks. This is probably eight nine hundred bucks. Just a box here. Yeah, five hundred bucks. I was shocked. I was surprised that the stuff was actually still here. Probably a couple three or four thousand dollars worth of stuff I've recovered. Up here, it's hard to have um, troopers stationed here. I wish we could have them in a community all the time. I'm happy for these days. It helps the native story cover some of their stuff so they're not out a whole bunch of money. Hey, I'm in this for the community. That's that's what I'm doing. Over 500 miles south in the Matsu Valley. Macom 5 2 tank. Wildlife Trooper Sergeant Doug Massey responds to a hunting call deep in the Alaskan backwoods. I got a complaint about one bear baiter says another bear baiter is compromising his safety because he's put a station real close to his and he thinks that he might get hit by a stray bullet. Beginning in April, baiting is allowed to make bear hunting easier. But they make Massey's job much more dangerous. We've had a lot of bear problems, particularly in, in the past week. Last year, we had record snowfall. It was rough on every animal, moose, bear. Everything's a little bit behind this year. You know, they've been out for a couple weeks now, just starting to get moving, getting real hungry. Wildlife Trooper Sergeant Doug Massey responds to a hunting call deep in the Alaskan backwoods. On today's patrol, he's teaming up with rookie wildlife trooper Ernie Brent. I'd like to get down there before the bears start coming out. And getting to the bait takes them straight into bear country. Remember on this one, he did kill a black bear here uh, a while back. If he hauled the carcass out, it's not going to be a problem, but if he left the carcass here, there could be one on it right now. They're kind of do what they want to do. Watch yourself. You want your gun? Yeah. Nobody knows if a bear's going to be here or not. That's why we're always prepared as if there's one there. A 300-pound black bear can just shred you to pieces. You know, we've had numerous documented human fatalities from bears. The worst thing you can do is run away. If you make yourself look like prey, it's usually what you'll become. What I like to do is just talk normal, like make noise, because the last thing you want to do is... Sneak up on one? Yeah, surprise a bear. It's not a great idea. That's why we carry the big guns. Do you smell that weird smell? Ugh. Man, something's been here. It's not long before Massey discovers there are much bigger dangers here. There we go. It's a grizz. They'll get grizzly in here, and it'll just chase off all the, the black bears because they're the dominant bear. There's a plastic chewed up right there. Take pieces off the site, and you can see where they've been chewing on that. Great. They head deeper into bear country in search of the bait stand. Smell that? Smell again? Just be cognizant of brownies. I think I see it right through here. Yeah, there's a stand. Marshmallows and popcorn. Marshmallows, like. popcorn. We've got some grain in there. Yeah. You can see where his teeth, these scrape marks, trying to get his lips in there. And one time I went up on a stand. I saw a bear sitting on his butt up against the tree, and he would reach in, and he would just eat the food out of it. It was hilarious. He looked like a poo bear with his honey. This site's set up to shoot the opposite direction, so it's not a safety issue. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's pretty far away. I'm thinking what it boils down to is, you know, hunter courtesy. They determine the site is safe and not infringing on the neighboring hunter's bear bait station. Well, there's some hurt feelings, and unfortunately, there's there's nothing we're going to do about that because we're not the, the hurt feelings police. On the back roads of the Matsu Valley, Trooper Knoll pulls over a speeder on a deserted roadway. 
Never a routine traffic stop in a state with the highest reported rate of assaults on officers. Nothing can compare to, to being a, a trooper in Alaska. Your backup can be 30, 40 minutes away. You've got to learn how to, to think on your feet and handle situations by yourself, you know, knowing that uh, it's going to be wild before you have anybody there to back you up. How you doing? Oh, not too bad. The reason I'm stopping you is you're driving 45 up Horizon, and then you turned on the Polaris without using your turn signal. Oh, my bad. Do you have ID on you, man? But just sit tight. I'll be back in a minute, okay? And CIC will be 45. I'll be 45. 27, 29 times 2. Is valid Delta. He's on probation for mix 2. He also has a DC warning on file. 10 for it. Noel just pulled over one of the most notorious meth cooks in the history of the Matsu Valley. Trooper Noel has just pulled over one of Alaska's original meth makers. You a, were you a heroin user? Me? Yeah. Uh, methamphetamines. Meth. Did you uh, smoke it or inject it? Actually, I made it. Oh, you cooked it? Well, I did 10 years on it. Interesting. He's a known meth cook. He's on probation. He doesn't want to go back to jail. He knows that I'm the only one out here right now. We're about 15 miles away from the, the closest backup, and uh, we're in a neighborhood out where people wouldn't be too friendly to our presence anyways. Hey, why don't you step out real quick? You on probation, man? Yeah. What's that? For mix? Yeah. And just keep your hands out of your pocket. How much longer are you on probation for? 2016 or 2016. Okay. What's this here? Um, big question. Butterfly knife? Damn it. What do you have a butterfly knife for? I'm allowed to have a three-inch knife. It's yeah. a gravity knife. It's illegal. Oh. Yeah. It's pretty sharp. All right. Just step back here. There's still one more person to question. Hey, just keep your hands up where I can see you. Any guns in the car? No. Are you a user? No. I've been clean for three weeks. Three weeks? Yes, sir. What do you use when you're... I usually use hair, but... What's this here? I don't know. <laughs> I, I... All right, just sit there. Keep your hands up on the dash, okay? He had three knives on him. No, he, he was prepared for some sort of interaction. Noel calls the driver's probation officer. Hey, it's Trooper Noel. Can you hear me okay? I'm out here with one of your uh, clients out off of KGB. He had three knives on him. He had a, a gravity knife, he had, a, he had another uh, pocket knife, and then he had a 10-inch uh, hunting knife on him. He had a baseball bat behind his driver's seat. All right, right, will do. All right, thank you. All right, step on out. Here's the deal, man. Huh? They want you to report first thing in the morning. Is that going to be a problem with you? Okay. Here, we'll walk up to the truck and take this off. Can I grab my pocket knife? No, no. Just leave that there. Be yeah. grabbing any knives. No problem if I claim it? Huh? I might have a three-inch pocket knife. Yeah, I'm going to put it in your okay, toolbox. Cool. I just don't like people picking up knives oh, when I'm talking. Right, 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 yeah. He was uh, one of the main meth cooks in the, in the valley for, for quite a while. That got caught the New Year's 2003. So that was right when meth was hitting it big in the valley then. Yeah, I was the old one of the bookman. One of the originals, huh? Look, man, I don't even have a cell phone. Yeah. That's how I'm how far away from everybody I'm trying to stay. Sure. You know what I mean? Well, I, don't, I don't blame you. It's mid-spring in Palmer. Warm weather's hitting, the sun's up, everybody's kind of out after being caged in all winter. It's been busy and crazy. And as the days grow longer and residents finish their spring cleaning, Storia gets even busier. Mail call then said he was cleaning out one of the sheds and located a wire up in the rafters. He pulled it down and it ended up being explosive. It is very unstable. Radio frequencies can set it off. If your cell phone's transmitting, it can set it off. It could be very dangerous. With residents potentially in harm's way, Trooper Storia must get there fast. I'm just going to go up, get a quick picture of it, and get the heck away from it. I don't care to lose fingers or a hand over touching something because it's neat looking. He arrives on scene and meets the anxious homeowner. Hey, how's it going? Down to that street shed out there. All right, where's it sitting at now? I set it on the log over here. Yeah, it's right here. Although small, the blasting cap is capable of blowing off limbs. All right, the, these things, um, they're pretty unstable. With the wires being connected, it can be very just unpredictable what it's going to do, and it can go off on its own. I didn't have so many electronic devices. I just got to turn off all my electronic devices here because I don't want to get trap metal in the face.
The device is armed. Sisteria calls in the bomb squad. Alright. Nob's waiting game. I don't know how big of an explosion it can make, so we gotta get it disposed of properly. After a tense 45 minutes, military personnel arrive. Trooper Stria, you the one I was talking to? Yes. Sir. Which one's what you got? Yeah, it's right over here on the log. Blasting caps the most sensitive explosive. Uh, that's what we use to make the big stuff like dynamite or C4 go off, so. <laughs> what I want to do is we'll put a, take a military blasting cap to it and make it go away. You want to go ahead and get the uh, mix 22? Have it go off and start. Our receiver. That's our transmitter. He's just going to test it out. They must dispose of the explosive quickly and safely. We could go back to the uh, trooper's vehicle. Let's go back there. Nobody's at the back windows in this facility or anything. Nobody's in there. Sandbag jump pretty good. Oh, that's left the wire. Small but dangerous. I know there's a lot of uh, those around because of everybody gold mined up in Hatcher Pass and all that. I'm sure there's more around than we know of. Find any more, call us. We'll get them up here again. <laughs> Hopefully you don't. <laughs> 